Hello there. A uh, very important programme that we've got here tonight. Is it all in danger of coming tumbling down at Stormont? Peter Robinson is demanding a judicial inquiry into secret government letters to more than 180 Republican on the runs. They were assured they would not be arrested. The First Minister is furious. This is a, an absolute outrage as far as justice and democracy is concerned. It's very clear to anybody who has listened to me exactly how angry I am about it and that I am not prepared to be a stooge for Westminster. I'm just not prepared uh, to be part of a government that uh, has uh, responsibility for policing and justice, yet is not told a very critical issue in relation to policing uh, and justice and given no information about it whatsoever. That's absurd. Nobody would stay in those circumstances. I want a full... Uh, judicial inquiry into all of these matters. I want to know who the 187 people are that received these letters. But it's absolutely vital that nobody is allowed to think that they can get away with them. That's why I want all of the letters rescinded. Well, tough talking there from the First Minister. Joining me now, the DUP Minister Arlene Foster and Sinn Féin's uh, Gerry Kelly. Peter Robson has gone further tonight, hasn't he? Because he has given the government till Friday to do what? Well, he met with the Secretary of State, as you know, tonight, and he was very clear with her that he wanted to express his anger at what had happened. He wanted her to know the depth of feeling right across Northern Ireland, Stephen. We've all been having calls today about how outraged people are feeling about this affront to justice, about this undermining of justice, about the fact that we have a secret and clandestine system of sending out letters, which are essentially get out of jail free cards. So he has spoken to the Secretary of State tonight, and you know what the alarming thing is tonight, Stephen? The fact that the Royal Prerogative of Mercy has actually uh, been used in some cases. So it's not just a case of people who uh, were uh, not questioned about uh, particular crimes, yeah. but they have also said that the Royal Prerogative of Mercy has been used as well. And well, that means people who yeah. either were convicted in their absence in court and who were uh, really on the run were allowed to come back to Northern Ireland. And we will get to that in a moment. It's actually in the court judgment, isn't it? Um, what is Peter Robinson saying? Under which circumstances is he saying he will resign? If he doesn't get those letters rescinded, will he resign? What he's saying is he needs to have clarity in and around the letters. Who got them? Who, what do the letters actually say? Because we understand that different people got different letters and we want to know what exactly those letters have said. And we understand the letters have been going out from 2000 right up until 2012. So we need to know what the letters say. And he's asked for a public inquiry. And he needs a public inquiry. But and the people asked, are entitled to know. And he's asked for the letters to be rescinded. Yes. And that's at the heart of this, because the DUP is saying those letters are fundamentally wrong. Yes. Which is why I'm asking you this question. Has the First Minister is he saying he will resign if those letters aren't taken out? Well, Stephen, he's been very clear about what he well, said well, today. Well, can you just be clear he, to me? Uh, oh, is yes, he? absolutely. If he the is, letters he are is, not rescinded, he is, is, he, is he resigning? Serious. He is resigning unless there's clarity around the letters and unless there's a public inquiry in relation to what has happened. So rescinding is not a deal breaker? Well, rescinding could mean getting clarity in relation to the letters so that he knows That's exactly what... That's not what rescinding what, means. No, OK. Well, you know, rescinding means that the letters that have been sent out are no longer valid. Yes. And that's what he wants to see. And happen. is that a resigning yes, matter for the First Minister? Matter. Absolutely. It's so a if those letters matter. are not withdrawn, yes. the First Minister will resign. Or if letters are followed up with and said, you were told that you were no longer wanted, but actually, if new evidence comes up, you will be brought in. No, because no, no, because new evidence is an issue already allowed for in the court judgment. It, it, ah, it, but it, it's not. And this in is the, part of the problem, no, Stephen. In the process, the if there is, is that fresh new evidence, we don't actually know what the letters actually say. In That's the, part of the problem. In this process, if there is new evidence, then any of these people on the run can be pursued again if there is fresh new evidence. Well, there was evidence in relation to the gentleman who was able to walk free in relation to the Hyde Park bombing. There was new evidence there. That was a specific case. There was a, yes. there was a mistake by the police. We will get into this later in the programme. Again, for clarity, will the First Minister resign if those people who have received those letters, if those letters are not voided? Yes, he will. It's very clear. Well, there's a message to you. It's not a message to me. I think he's giving a message to somebody else. Um, uh, this is the First Minister. I think he's painted himself in the corner. With due respect to yourself, I think you've helped him pin himself further until tonight. I think I, Peter I, Robinson, well, but, I think but Peter I, Robinson but I, knows but I, his own but mind. I can clarify, but I can clarify the letters. I know what they need an inquiry for. 
the letters were if somebody went forward and, and said that I want to know if I am being sought for uh, questioning or arrest, um, what my status is. And uh, in 187 of those uh, situations, letters were sent back saying that we are not looking for you, we don't need you. Uh, we are talking about these people as if they have been uh, all through the courts, as if they are um, all in the IRA. Well, you said, some of them, you said some of them may end up I said, in jail I said, if they had gone to court on my radio show this no, morning. That's right. I said. So some, you believe some of them would have been found no, guilty? No, what I said was, and you may have, have been. It. No, I said may have been, but yeah. anyway, I'm not quibble. Uh, I said they may have been, that's right. But what is your point? The point is due process was not allowed to continue no. in a court. This, and here's my point. Well, Sorry, let me spell out my point, Jerry uh, Kelly. But, but you're, no, assuming you've asked that, me. you're assuming well, that they would have went to court. That's the first thing. Well, hold on so you're making a big assumption. Well, let me, you always accuse me of not letting you finish the sentence. Let me finish okay. mine. Let me just spell out to you what my point is. The British government, including the Secretary of State, is currently telling this country that those letters were simply letters of fact that there was such insufficient evidence to pursue mm -hmm. those people that the prosecutions could not continue. Right. Is it not an extraordinary situation where we have the government of this day saying there was no evidence against those people and Sinn Féin are saying it's, if those people had gone to court, some of them may have actually have been well, jailed? It's, it's That's an, my point. Well, well, let me then make this point. It's, the extraordinary situation in this is that we were in a conflict resolution situation that in all conflict resolution situations that you want to look at throughout the world, there were the same or similar processes whereby the combatants involved in it were dealt with as well as the prisoners, as well as arms, as well as all of these things which we have dealt with. Are the bloody Sunday these, soldiers combatants? Well, 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 yes, they are. And let, and let me finish. And, and I will go on to answer that question before he even asks it. The difference between the state forces and the uh, um, Republicans yeah. and the Republicans... Yeah. Uh, and, and again, there you go, accusing people of being terrorists, and they have been through the court. But yes, the difference point, between the difference the between the court, that's the whole point. well, then why you call them terrorists? The why you call well, them terrorists? You don't know anything. You don't have to say anything running about them. And now you're calling are you, them terrorists. Are you seriously and suggesting you're that those people didn't support but anyway, the IRA? Me, are you seriously let, suggesting that? Well, I'm seriously suggesting that in, in the conflict there was a period of internment in the first instance. Yes. So I could argue that those people were innocent because they were in without trial. That's the first thing. And they weren't supporting. They weren't supporting the IRA. Well, are you seriously arguing? Because even the British government has, has accepted that they put all sorts of innocent people in during I'm not term. talking about internment. I'm talking about oh, those people. Talk about we're talking about the We're talking about the Why did they go through Jerry Kelly? Why did they go through Sinn Féin then, if they weren't well, IRA sympathisers well, and terrorists? Well, well, because anybody, I, I, you know, I'm elected to a constituency. Anybody can come on the way, including unionists, by the way, can come into my office and ask for help. How, how many, uh, how many people well, from the UDF well, and UDA well, came to you to get off Stephen, on the run? Stephen has asked the question, and let me answer it. There, there are, there are people. Um, the difference between the state forces and the uh, Republicans was that there were no on-the-runs in the state forces. And the reason there were no on-the-runs is despite the fact there were hundreds of killings, despite the fact of, uh, of collusion between state forces and, and loyalist uh, figures, that there was only a handful of people in the state forces ever went to jail. So they were acting with impunity and immunity. The issue never arose on state forces because there wouldn't have been anybody on the run because people who should have went to jail were never even thought of arresting or questioning or anything. Thing. So let's put the balance into this. So what's going to happen in relation to the Bloody Sunday soldiers then? Well, I don't know what's going to happen to no. relation to the Bloody Sunday soldiers. No, we, no what, nor less do you well, care. Well, and, well, well, actually, maybe less I do. do you care. No, no, what I, what I uh, have said, and during the Haas talks when we discussed this, the whole idea was that there would be a HIU which allowed for uh, prosecutions right across the board. Well, let me finish, because you, you know, you're saying less do I care. Uh, right across the board. There was also a process of bringing forward information uh, on, uh, through the uh, information recovery system. There was, this is a legacy issue. Uh, the point has been missed here. We have gone into negotiations to try and deal with all of these issues and actually that the UP are walking away from it. Well, I'll tell you what has been missed, is that we entered uh, a situation in Haas on a deceit. On a deceit. Because we were not aware of these letters going out in relation well, to the on-the-run. Well, and, you that. know, I've listened to Sinn Féin and I've listened to Peter Hayne today saying, oh, everybody knew that the on-the-runs had to be dealt with. We knew that you tried and failed to bring it before Parliament in 2006. The question was then asked by my party leadership in relation to what about on the runs? They were given a letter to say that there won't be any legislation. Yeah, but Arlene, to be fair... No, hold on, let me finish, Stephen. That there won't be any legislation and that there won't be any amnesty for the on-the-run. So, essentially... 
the government deceived the leadership of the Democratic Unionist Party. So when, that, um, when the amnesty didn't happen, when the legislation fell, we're, we are all to believe that the DUP just thought, oh, well, that's gone away now. That's well, gone out of Sinn Féin's mind. Nothing well, has happened. You, Stephen, You've forgotten plenty, about it. I'm going to tell you, Stephen, there's plenty of things in Sinn Féin's mind that they would quite like. Do you think they've got all of the things that are in their minds that they would quite like? Is that what you're seriously saying So you tonight? didn't want to know or you didn't ask We or what? asked the question in 2006 and we got the letter back. And, and the letter and is a matter of public... And well, since then? It's, it's well, put well, out into the well, public here domain. Well, here you are in 2009 in the Eames Bradley uh, report, which was a public well, report. Well, what does the Eames Bradley report say? Well, it says here, the group say? acknowledges that it is difficult to be precise about the exact number of on-the-run cases, yeah. but understands that the circumstances of around 200 individuals have been considered by the PSNI and the PPSNI in order that their status can be assessed. Assess While the majority of these individuals are not wanted for arrest or prosecution, almost a quarter of the cases well, are still under arrest. Where, where, so, where does it say, so, and each of them got a letter that well, said to them that they would say, not be prosecuted it doesn't say exactly in circumstances that, but you are pretending, public you are pretending that you... I'm not you pretending are, anything. Well, you dare are, say I'm well, pretending well, anything. You are, well, you are pretending. <laughs> and, and let me die. Let me die. Right? So... You, you are pretending, despite what I read out there, that the DUP did not know, and it says very precisely that the OTRs were being dealt with, OTRs on the runs were being dealt with, and to sit there and say that and where, you didn't know that the say, OTRs, and, and that's 2009. Say, and where does it say that there was an administrative scheme to deal with the issue? Where does it say in it that that you have read it? No, it doesn't. That's right. That's and what, fundamental so, problem. So, so, what, so what is your disagreement? Is are you saying you knew problem? nothing about so the OTRs, Arling, you knew, or are you saying you knew nothing about the letters? So, Arlene, you knew it was being dealt with, but you didn't know how. No, we did not know it was being dealt well, with. What's in the Eames Bradley that was being dealt with? And, and what did we do with Eames Bradley? Did we you rejected read it? Eames Bradley. But you read we rejected about it Eames Bradley. Bradley. We rejected Eames Bradley. So you knew about it and rejected it? What do you mean we knew about it? Well, we you're didn't know about the on-the-run scheme, it says it the administrative did you know scheme about that was that? running. Did you know about that and rejected it? Did I know about what? Did you know about what I've read out there and rejected it? Because that's what you're only after saying. That is Eames Bradley. That is their assessment. Then, that is not the facts that came forward But it forward says 200. Today. It says 200, 200 individuals. Well, look, well, look, we can actually so you didn't know about it and we, you rejected well, it. We can move this further. We can move this further because Dennis Bradley actually has gone further tonight. He says the policing board was fully informed about what was going on. Have a look at this. I was vice chairman of the Northern Ireland Policing Board. Um, the police came in and gave us a very detailed briefing on this scheme, which has now been questioned and which we're now being told wasn't in the public domain. So the police actually were quite upfront and quite open, and all of the political parties in Northern Ireland would have, barring Sinn Féin, who weren't on the policing board at the time, would have been aware of the scheme. And that this scheme, as it was, as it was run out by the policing service of Northern Ireland, was reported to the policing board, discussed at the policing board, it was in the Eames Badley report, we made recommendations around it, so it was a public issue. And the DUP and, uh, do you know were what? on the policing board? They were absolutely on the policing board, and I have spoken to two members of the policing board at that time, and they have said very clearly that they did not receive any detailed briefing from the police. And so I would, I would challenge Dennis Bradley to bring forward any of the minutes from the well, policing board. there will be minutes, won't there? Until, yes, there will be minutes. Up until 2007, when he left the policing board, actually 2006 he left the policing board, to show me in the minutes of the policing board where there was a briefing in relation to on the runs. Because I've spoken to my colleagues before I came on the show tonight, because I knew that this was going to be an issue. I said, had you ever received a briefing in relation to On The Run? So why would he say that? I have no idea. So I have we, no idea. So we need to find the minutes, right? You do. You find the minutes. Let's go up here to this, this, this lady just here. Go ahead. Hello. I would just like to say I think it's time maybe to start moving on and say how we can make a difference within the future. Why do you say that? Does because... it not matter to you <coughs> that justice prevails at all times? Like, I was reading Jerry Kelly... Uh, talking about Bloody Sunday and talking in the past about needing justice for his community, about demanding justice. What about people in the unionist community demanding justice? Well, I think it is Are important. they allowed to as yeah. well? It is important to sort, but it is important to sort it out and how you're going to make amends in the future because I think that's what everyone else is looking forward to is the future and how it's going to be implemented. Well, there's a guy here. Go ahead. Yep. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Stephen, for years now, Sinn Féin and the Republican movement have been demanding that members of the security force have been brought to justice for alleged collusion in other instances in Northern Ireland. As he prepared here tonight in front of this audience and the thousands at home watching to come out and demand that justice be brought for his IRA friends who are now walking about with get out of jail free cards. Oh. 
I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I was asked in the, in the Haas talks and come up on a number of occasions, and I said very clearly that uh, we are trying to deal with the issues of the past as well as two other issues uh, in the Haas talks. And whatever comes out of the Haas talks has to be across the board and has to be done on an equal basis. So that's my position. Does that, does, could that apply to the, the soldiers it, being investigated it, it should apply, in Bloody Sunday? It should apply to everyone. Yeah, but, but answer including, the question. Including, yes, including the soldiers. So you would see a situation I would in see which a the Bloody Sunday soldiers could no. be given immunity I, from any prosecution? I see, well, would remem you? well remember, what Haas, remember what Haas said. It, it set up a, 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 a HIU, a, a Historical Inquiries Unit, uh, which would allow families right across the board either on the, if you like, the Unionist side and the Nationalist side, who could pursue justice. So we, were, we agreed with that across the board. Uh, you're making a mistake in, in saying that these uh, 187 people have evaded justice. What they asked for was an assessment of what their yeah. status was, and they got an answer to it. That is not well, evading justice. This is also causing controversy on the back benches of David Cameron's party. Uh, Join us now from London, the Tory MP and former British Army officer Bob Stewart. Uh, Bob, what's your reaction to what's happened here? I'm pretty sad. I'm pretty appalled. Um, if we're talking about the Hyde Park bombings, which we started this, I'm absolutely shocked that this a man who's allegedly done this is not going to be tried. Uh, I find it absolutely appalling, and I obviously had no knowledge about any, as you say, get out of jail cards. Well, 30 odd of these letters were handed out under your government, not just Labour. So, what do you say to your Secretary of State, Theresa Villers, who's in your party, who's standing over those letters being handed out? Well, what we said in the House of Commons is we want to know who's done it. And that question was asked repeatedly today. I mean, let's be quite clear, five months after the Hyde Park uh, bombings occurred, I lost six men personally, 11 soldiers were killed, six civilians were killed at Ballykelly, um, and I was the incident commander there, and five people were taken to court as a result, and five people were sent to prison, quite rightly. They were guilty. Um, what concerns me is, frankly, one person who is allegedly involved with the Hyde Park bombings uh, is not going to trial. Well, he has denied any involvement. The rest? There's always a team. I, I take that point. I absolutely take that point. But I think the police believed that he Okay. had a case to answer, and now there is no case to answer, and he's walking free. But let me, I totally agree but with let me, all those people in Northern Ireland who are deeply upset by this. Yeah, but if the people are deeply upset about not just Hyde Park, but about all of the letters that have been handed out, Colonel Stewart, some of those letters have been handed out under your government's watch, with Theresa Villers, the Secretary of State of this country, standing over it and supporting it. Are you prepared to condemn her tonight for doing so? She's in your party. Call it. I'm not con... I'm condemning who's done it, frankly. I don't know who's done it. We mm. asked who was responsible. We repeatedly asked You that know the letters point. have been handed out. Um, from my benches, the back benches. I'm not in the government. I'm a backbencher. I asked for things to be done properly. I asked for how this had happened. Who okay. was responsible for okay. it? And we need to know well, that. Let me ask you this question. The, let, the First Minister of this country is asking for the letters to be rescinded or else he will resign. Do you support him? Yes, of course I do. I want those, all those people that have carried out a crime to be brought to justice. Including members of consulted. the security forces? I've just said that. Of course it does. Jerry? If people have carried out a crime, I want them to be brought he, to justice. Let me let Jerry Kelly speak to Again, you. Again, he is making an assumption that the people who were uh, cleared in this uh, have carried out a crime. There is absolutely no evidence of them having carried out any crime. Well, there is evidence, but it just hasn't been t tested in court well, well, to prove innocence had, or well, guilt. With, with respect, and had, yes, there is a presumption well, of innocence respect, in this country. Yes, how, there is. How are you saying that there's evidence? How am I saying there's evidence? Yes, how am I first there's of evidence? all, first of do all, you know, do you know outside of John Downey? Do you know any of the rest? Well, of let's talk about John Downey. Well, outside of John Downey. Why outside because of John, John Downey? Because John Downey has gone through the court. You see, you either believe in the court system or you don't. John Downey, well, well, you, you believe in the British court system now, do you? Well, I. I <laughs> well. Have you, 
it's and you a believe in you believe in royal prerogatives now as well, do you? Wait a minute. It's it's a fair question that Stephen asked. And we went through a whole negotiation which involved a change in the judiciary here and a change in the police service. And yes, I did sign up to live in the end. So let's be very clear about that. We are not in the same situation that we were in during the conflict where there was torture, where there was people uh, beaten in Castle Ray, uh, where there was uh, people murdered okay. on the streets by state forces. That was the conflict situation. We're in a different situation well, now. OK, there are lots of you actually joining us. I will let you come back yeah. in, a, in a second or two. There are lots of you joining the studio debate uh, tonight uh, from home. Just to remind you how you can get in touch. The uh, details are all coming up on your screen. Uh, 08459 555 uh, 678 is the number to call. You'll see the charges there uh, as well. Please read the charges. Hello. Well, Stephen, I'd just, like to say just let me get this mic to you. Go ahead. I'd just like to say that it's part of the peace process that the underruns are being dealt with. And we have to accept that. Both sides have to accept. Have to accept what? That's part of the peace process. You know what I mean? Some Fein negotiated this. This is what they wanted. Yeah. And, and, nobody, and, and uh, nobody else knew? Oh, they knew. They knew. No, they knew. Oh, they all knew. They well, you think knew. they all yes, knew? Uh, well, they, they said they did not know. Well, the First Minister, to be fair to Peter Robinson, know, and look, let's be fair to the First Minister, I said at nine o'clock this morning, well, now that the First Minister, Peter Robinson, does know, what's he going to do about it? And what's he going to do about it? He has said that he will put his job on the line if those letters aren't taken out. Well, why should they be took out to the part of the peace process? You know what I mean? Any, issue, any, to, any, to, letters, to me, any letters issued to any unionists? I don't to know. any loyalists? You don't know. Don't well, know, exactly. You know. So we I, don't I don't know. really don't care because it's part of the peace process, both sides. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, Peter Robinson, to me, is trying to bully us, the rest of the people. And the his way, he's going to resign. Trying to bully the people? That's what he's doing, be threatening. Is he not standing up for transparency? No, he's not. No, he's threatening to resign. Because he didn't yeah. know... About, he's a, imagine running a country and you don't know that letters have been issued to people that say, don't worry, we're not coming he after does, you. No, he does, no. Well, he, he claims just doesn't he doesn't. Want it. He claims he doesn't. Right, Stephen's on the line too. Hello to you, Stephen. Hello. Go uh, ahead, Stephen. Stephen. Go ahead, very quickly, please. Now, basically, I think Peter Robson should resign. I, I honestly believe that um, they should collapse the current um, executive, and I also believe that the reason for that being that they sold the Protestant Unionist Loyalist people a pop. I think that we got the bad end of the deal, and I, you look at what's happened with the Praise Commission, you look at what's happened at Twitter Avenue, you look at what every, everybody okay. in the Protestant Unionist Loyalist com community feel that they're on the back foot. Yeah, but what about peace? And think about peace and how important it is uh, to, to this <coughs> country. Absolutely. Uh, All right, Stephen, we, thank we, you for your call. I've got to move on, mate, because there are hundreds of people wanting to get through. There are loads of people here in the studio as well. The DUP says this is a crisis. Arlene Foster has said tonight if those letters are not taken off the people they were given to, the First Minister's gone. He is resigning. Now, what is Stormont going to do about this crisis? During the debate, the Ulster Unionist Party leader, Mike Nesbitt, the SDLP's Alex Atwood... The TV leader, Jim Allister, and the Alliance Justice Minister, uh, David Ford. Mike Nesbitt. Well, the First Minister has stood up very, very tall and put his job on the line. If those letters are not rescinded, will you too resign? Resign from what? Will you pull out of the executive? Stephen, what, what we need to do, it's very easy to, to pull out of something, to destroy something, to knock it down. Jay Kelly knows that. It's much more difficult to build something. What people want to do is build a proper peace, a fair peace, a just peace, so that we can move on. And if the OTRs had done what David Trimble wanted them to do and gone through a judicial process, we would have been beyond this over ten years ago and talking about the economy, talking about okay. the education so system. So it's not a deal breaker for you. You will stay in the executive. No. What I want to know is the truth. For example, did Richard Haas know about the 200 letters? Because for eight months, Jerry. I have sat, and the Ulster Unionist Party have sat, six months in Haas, two months in party leaders, and not once were these letters mentioned. Well, well let's nail that. Yeah, uh, uh, since, let's nail the answer. Let's nail the answer. Well, Did he know? Well, since, since, since you're directing the question to me, then let me say this to you. The UUP went into, including yourself. Did Haas know? Well, let me answer it in my own way. You went into the, uh, <laughs> you went into the card of talks, right? You didn't want to have anything to do with them. Yes, within the Haas talks from the start, the UUP were running against the Haas talks. They were talking to the press every single day. They were trying to destroy it. You're and, now you're, and now you're... No, you're making this up. Now you're coming... Well, that's the press themselves. Now you're coming here 
and trying to get on your high horse about you were all up for the Huss, the Huss uh, proposals. You were Did never up for the Huss proposals. Did he know? Ask, ask Richard Huss. Do you know Vigny? Well, he hasn't here's what yet. I know. Do you I'm... know Vigny? No, I don't know Vigny. OK, well, then he can't answer it. David Ford, you're just, you've just left uh, the Secretary of State, Theresa Villa. What did you say to her? I think we had what you euphemistically describe as a full and frank and robust exchange of views. Yeah. Did you have a row? You can describe it whatever way you like. I made it absolutely clear that the statements from the NIO and her statements in Parliament today had been misleading in terms of referring to the role of the devolved authorities. This was an NIO scheme set up by Labour in the NIO, continued to be administered by Tories in the NIO, and nothing was said to any of the devolved executive parties. And that is a fundamental misleading point to suggest that we were party to that scheme. So what are you going to do about it? Well, we at least started to get some honesty this evening and I got an apology from the Secretary of State. She so apologised? She apologised What did she apologise for? She apologised for the misleading way in which it was suggested that this was something to do with devolution. She admitted that this was solely their scheme and the Labour Party's scheme before them. And that was a significant change from the impression she and, gave and, in the House. And of how Congress. do you feel? Because some of these letters were handed out as recently as a year ago, right? Just over a year ago. While you're the Justice Minister. How do you feel about that? Well, there are certain things that I don't know as Justice Minister because the NIO handles them because they're national security and so on. But fundamentally, for them to say this is now an issue we believe should be handled by the devolved authorities, yet they never told the Department of Justice, either at the point of devolution they were still running the scheme, or when they ended it and advised Sinn Féin to contact the devolved authorities if there were any more. It's a fundamental mishandling. It's a, an affront to the rule of law. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Because what we should have had was a proper legal process to deal with the OTRs. Yes, we needed to deal with it, but we did not de it dealt with by a shabby backdoor deal between the Labour government and Sinn Féin, which was absolutely unclear to the rest of us. Alex, it's the complete opposite okay. of what happened on Good Friday. Alex Atwood, you were on the policing board. Mm -hmm. Did you know about this? Uh, well, I hear what Dennis Bradley has said, and he's done many good things, but he's not infallible. So I spent a long time today checking with former board staff, board members, with senior police. And there is, as I put it frankly, a muddle that we have to work out about what the board was or was not told. But whatever... Did you know? No, didn't know. Um, and I'm going to confirm that now because the board, and Dennis Bradley confirms this and former senior police confirm this, confirmed that they never knew and there was no advice ever given that there was any deal done in dark corridors between Sinn Féin and the British government and that between 2000 and say 2005, six letters were being handed to Jerry to hand to somebody mm -hmm. who was on the run and so, forth and so, far, so on and so forth. So let's be un ambiguous about that. But let me also say this, uh, something that uh, David's just touched upon. So you're backing Peter Robinson in this one rather than Martin McGuinness, no, is that correct? No, I'm, I am saying that the board needs to now interrogate its own files and see what was or was not advised to the board sometime, if at all, in late 2006, okay. 2007. I'll, I'll, and then, and only then, uh, can you make a definitive answer to all of that. OK, Jim Allister, do you admire the First Minister for putting his job on the line over this issue? Well, we'll see if he does. I think the First Minister's position is quite simply this. He has found himself in the embarrassing position of leading a government with Sinn Féin, uh, of being the one who sustains Sinn Féin in government. He, it is now quite obvious that to get that government in place, he was sold a pup, he bought a pup uh, in terms of these secret deals, and he's now furiously trying to catch up with the tempo of the unionist community, uh, because the unionist community is absolutely outraged uh, at, at what this, uh, this subversion of the, uh, the due process and the justice system uh, indicates. And I think that uh, therefore the, the, for, the First Minister's hand has been pushed, uh, forced in that, but I will seek to hold him to it if he doesn't get his full Morning. judicial public inquiry. Uh, and we're not talking about a hot and whitewash, I hope. If he doesn't get rescinding of the letters, then he has to prove himself as good as his word. And I, for one, will not weep any tears about the loss of this miserable, failing, dysfunctional executive that has delivered nothing for anyone in seven years. Arlene? Well, let me say this very clearly. And um, Jim, of course, was part of our negotiating team in 2004 to 2007. Peter I was has never been, allowed to Peter... negotiate. I was kept in a cupboard, so to speak. 
<laughs> Surely not. Yes, him. Not exactly. in a cupboard. Not allowed to negotiate. In fact, in fact, <laughs> uh, Downing Street civil servants reached a point where they refused to attend meetings that I was at because they didn't like the hard questions I asked. Of course, the DUP reached a point where there was such an urge to get into but government. But you stayed on the team. They were on the team. Stayed on the team. I wasn't allowed to negotiate. He was they were asking any hard. But you stayed on the team. So you stayed on the team. I stayed on the team in the I stayed anyway. in the party until the. Sa I stayed. <laughs> I stayed as long as my conscience would let me, but once they signed up to go into government with the IRA, I was out of there. Uh, and I'm very proud that I was out of there uh, and was no part of the betrayal so in just which they ended up. I, I okay. just need to answer this because I was going to go on to talk about after the cupboard situation. Um, here's, the, here's the reality. Peter has called for a public inquiry. Why would Peter call for a public inquiry if there was something to hide? Answer that question. And the reality well, is, there not, is nothing to well, hide. Well, well, hold on and he moment. wants to know. Well, well, hold on he wants to know precisely who, well, what, where, when, why this all happened. Okay. Well, I don't and know. And I really believe that what he has done has said to the people of Northern Ireland, "We are going to take on what is a fundamental affront to justice." Yeah. It is not open and transparent, well, I, I don't it know. is hidden, and okay. therefore we need to get to the well, bottom well, of it. Well, look, I don't know uh, the detail, obviously, about what the First Minister did and did not know, OK? But sometimes, and let's generalise this rather than talk about Peter Robinson, sometimes inquiries are quite a good tactic to buy time. In other words, you set up an inquiry and the results of that inquiry come out in about two years' time, the story's gone, Bought time, it's all calmed down. Yeah. That's why sometimes people would ask for an do, inquiry. Do you seriously think that's going to happen in this case when there's so much anger in society about this affront to justice? That's not going to happen, Stephen. Let me be, let me be very clear in relation to that. Well, it's not going to happen because the First Minister is going to be gone on Friday if those letters aren't rescinded. The First Minister has made his position very clear. I don't know what all this sort of, oh, is he or isn't he? He's made himself very and clear just, on all of this. And just Let you, me be very clear. Just you, Mr Alistair, sitting there smiling tonight. Would you actually... Would, would, uh, I'm sorry if that offends, well, Stephen. Would, well, <laughs> would, you actually, would you actually prefer direct rule back here with Dublin input? Because that could be the alternative. No, that's not if the alternative. If this falls. Well, it that's could not be. The alternative. Not in your we're world. Part, it very much could be. We're part of the United Kingdom, and we would be ruled as part of the United Kingdom. Well, and it would be by a duty. British government that yes, you think hides letters, letters from you? Yeah. Uh, by a British government which does hide letters. But, so you but, want to be ruled by them? Yes, but we're presently ruled by Sinn Féin, who carry the letters, who have the letters in their pockets to get their mates uh, off uh, justice. So that's the sort of okay. system that we live under. That um, is the obscenity of government in Northern Ireland, well, that we have the top and heart of government of those who negotiate the for there. their IRA friends and who they are their top priority. Well, again, here we go, the accusation that all these people are in the IRA. Uh, uh, I, I the keys in the, you, the, there keys is in the title, on the there, runs. There is a fundamental... What are they running from? Uh, not, not you, Jim, anyway. There, there's a, a fundamental um, mistake we made here. These were people who simply asked to find out if they were uh, being sought. And on a number of occasions, in, in this case 187, uh, they were told that they weren't. It's as straightforward and simple as that. You're looking for things. How many were that told they were? Fearing. I don't know. <laughs> but, or some? But, well, in, in that report I read out to you, they were saying at that stage, which was 2009. Uh, it was ragging. There was you seriously uh, don't know? about a third. No, I don't. Uh, so you're the postman. You get the letters, and you don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so it. I can make a guess. You want to make a guess? Yeah. yeah a couple of dozen. Still working dozen. on them. Tell them. Yes, they, those... yes, they are still working on. Them. Yeah. And and I do tell the truth. Oh, right. Stephen. Well, look, just just to remind you. What about telling the truth about your past? Why did you start I've there? Always, I've always told my past is okay. open to everybody. Oh, yes. Why did you tell but, the truth about right. your past? Let's, let's, hear, let's hear about all well, the let's terrorist incidents you know, let's, let's, let's hear tonight you about see, the terrorist incidents you, see, you were involved Irvin, in. Let's see, hear about see, the letters Irvin, you would need to cover your past, see, Mr. Kelly. See when David Irvine stood up. When David Irvine stood up and David Irvine. You see all the rhetoric that, that you come out with over, over the years. And the rights I've heard of the loyalist paramilitary standing up and saying it was people like you and others who drove them out onto the streets. So you were prepared to sit in your big houses and let them well, go out and do the dirty work for you. Victim maker. Victim maker.
Just, just to remind you, John Downey, as we've been discussing over the last couple of days, he will not face trial, although he was a suspect for the 1982 Hyde Park bomb. It was the collapse of his trial that has brought all of these secret letters into the open. Into the open. And joining us now from our Millbank studio, Chris Daly, whose brother Anthony was killed in the Hyde Park bomb. Chris, what's your reaction to what has happened here? I think, as has been shared already in the studio, there's just immense anger that the possibility of somebody being brought to account for his past actions now seems not possible. And do you believe that these letters were part of a peace process that had to happen? I know you're distant from it in the, in the geography of Northern Ireland, but people would argue, and Peter Hayne, for example, would argue that that, that re let's remember what peace has achieved here. Absolutely. I think the Good Friday Agreement obviously dealt mainly with those who were already in custody. And then the introduction of the administrative scheme with regard to OTRs that was introduced in 2000, 2001, was really based, had certain safeguards put in place to ensure that checks were made on not only the Northern Ireland computer system, but also the police national computer and Interpol to try and assess each individual's situation on its own merit and whether there was still sufficient requirement for them to be wanted on all those various networks. What, what Chris, would your brother have made of this? I think what's happened here, and this is when focusing on, on the Downey situation was that the, the scheme was put in suspended animation while legislation was tried to be introduced between 2005 and 2006. When it was restarted in 2007 with Operation Rapid administrating it, it seems that in the desire to speed things up that the initial safeguards refused to be, weren't being implemented so that just taking the facts from the judgment, it seemed that the checks against Interpol were not being made. And Operation Rapid checked with the Police National Computer in April of 2007 whether Downey was still wanted, and it came up that he was. Then in June, Operation Rapid within themselves recognised that their checking process between the Northern Ireland Computer and the Police National Computer was flawed. So, however, the month later, Downey gets issued this letter, so it, a terrible mistake has been made because he was still wanted. He should never have received such a letter. However, this mistake was highlighted a year later when another investigation noted the fact that Downey was wanted on the police national computer system. However, the PSNI didn't do anything with that information. Yeah. And then on a third occasion, in 2009, again, it was highlighted what a mistake had been made and nothing was done. And okay. we really don't understand how that could happen. Chris, we, we appreciate you talking to us uh, tonight. Florence, where's Florence tonight? Hello, Florence. You lost your brother, Gordon, in an IRA yes. bomb in Armagh 30 years ago. Yes. How do you feel? I feel completely and utterly let down by the government. There's been absolutely no justice for innocent victims, and I'd like to ask Jerry Kelly if, out of these 187 people, he obviously knows them all. He knows what they've done. Why, why are they on the run to start off with if they didn't do something? Could there be one of them was involved in my brother's murder? Are we going to be told these things? Well, I'll, I'll and do you ever think of the feelings of innocent victims of the troubles? Well, because all we ever hear, and I was at a conference yesterday, which we have come away from traumatised. Mm because most of the people there were Republicans, perpetrators. And innocent victims get nothing. I know of groups, a lady sitting beside me here tries to run a group in Rathrile and they get no money. Well, Terrorist I'm... groups get money right, left and centre. Could you tell me why this is happening in this well, country? I'll, I'll, and why I'll... innocent victims' voices aren't being heard? Well, I'll, why I'll... we're not getting any justice? Let, let's, let, let's let Jerry reply I'll, to you. I'll, I'll try and answer some of the questions. First of all, you asked the question, do I realise that there's victims and survivors who are going through a terrible trauma? And, and yes, I do. I've, I've lost loved ones in the conflict as well. I've lost uh, close friends in it. 
It was a uh, terrorist campaign. No, no, Sorry. I, I, I understand your point of view, and, and you've made it very clear, and, and, and I'm not here to argue about that. Mm -hmm. But I am here to say that there are victims right across the board, and I say this with, with absolute respect to you, um, because you know nobody can nobody can deal with your loss except you. But right across the board, there were victims. And there are many victims on the national side um, I think. who believe. Well, let me finish okay. now because you know there were there were many victims on on the national side uh, who never got justice. Uh, of, of all the state killings, there's only been a handful of people went in the jail. Whereas on the national side, there's 25,000 people within the jail. But I think I think I, I, think, I think I think Jerry, one of the questions that this lady asked you was, how does she know, and will she ever find out, uh, if the person who killed her brother? is one of the on-the-runs who you have handed a letter to? That well, was one of her questions. Well, well, I think you made, with respect to you, you made a comment which says, uh, I must know them all, which, frankly, I don't, but that I must know then um, what they might have been on the run for, and I don't know that either. The way the process worked was very simple. Uh, a name was put forward along with the date of birth, and uh, the full name and the date of birth, and when they may have uh, um, moved out of uh, the north when they believed they were, they were being sought. Were there that's, many on the runs you didn't know? That's, that's only, was there many on the runs I didn't know? Yeah. I, I mean, why would I know 187 people? You know, <laughs> what, what... It was a very simple process, but it wasn't justice, process. Jerry. It wasn't uh, justice. But that's your view. You see... Well, no, no, but, but let me say this. You see, you're talking as if... And, and with due respect to all the arguments around him, and I understand all the arguments, but this is not a surprise. This is something which Sinn Féin talked about from the very start in the negotiations, every single meeting, uh, with the British and with everybody else. You may not have known about the letters, but you certainly knew that the OTRs um, needed to be sorted okay. out, that they were a necessary, that they were a necessary part okay. of the process. Okay. And just, le just let okay. me finish this last well, well, one. Well, and, and, and in fairness to unionists, they were never... Uh, for sorting out either the prisoners or the OTRs, should, and they no, never would have been. Should the no, British government have been? Been. Should but they, had, but they had to be process. sorted out. But they had okay, to be sorted out. Right, right. Should, should the British have government have a judicial them? process? Should they have been told? In my opinion, there would have been a crisis, and this is the difficulty, this is where uh, we're missing the point. There would have been a crisis yeah. on every single every single OTR. Yeah. Why? Canary because Wharf? the unionists yeah. did not want Another to sort out an decision. issue which needs okay. to be sorted out. It's okay. a legacy okay. issue. Okay. And the best place yeah. to sort that out was in Haas. I am going to give I am going to give I am going to give another victim an opportunity to be on this uh, programme this evening. Jude White, your mother was murdered by loyalists, Jude. How do you feel tonight? I would have only one thing to say after this last 50 minutes, and I, I say this sincerely and, and from the bottom of my heart. Um, anybody in this society under the age of 30, my strong advice to you would be to get yourself educated and get out of here. <clears throat> this, this, this society is intractable, it is poisoned, it is fractured. I, 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 I despair by what I've listened to tonight, and I say that from a humanist point of view. I don't hold any religious beliefs at all. I can see the pain in uh, that lady in the audience. Um, it's the same pain that thousands of people, um, if not tens of thousands of people, have actually gone through. This society is finished. Uh, we cannot resolve our problems. I've sat on a victim's forum for four years. We okay. cannot do it, and we are going to have to leave it to another generation. I'm sorry. Well, those words of despair, it's a challenge to our politicians who may be able to find a way through this and may be able to prove you wrong. The only way to solve this now is through a public inquiry. And, you know, let me, let me, quote, okay. you, let me quote you what Gerry Adams said in the Doyle today about another public inquiry that has been called for in relation uh, to the guards in the South. He said, the only acceptable way to bring this chaotic episode to some sort of clarity and conclusion is through an independent inquiry. Now, if it's good enough in the Republic of Ireland to have a public inquiry into the guards. Okay. It's certainly good enough to have a public right, inquiry. We, we are nearly out of time, so I have one question for all of you. Do you support a public inquiry? Mike Nesbitt. I, I support getting to the truth. The public inquiry is a means to the end. I don't care what the means is. Okay. Steve, provided, sir? provided it's not a whitewash like the Hutton inquiry, and provided it okay. doesn't delay the issue of the rescinding of the letters. David Ford? It's probably now the only way in which we will get any confidence back into the justice system, given the interference from the Northern Ireland Office over the years. Alex Atwood? Uh, this should be an inquiry, but we first have to step back from the politics of the Coliseum. 
yesterday at the victims' conference. Let me finish this. Well, point. we are at, out of time. At, at the victims' conference Very yesterday, quickly. one of the messages was for many people was that there was a new strength and confidence among victims that their issues okay. would be dealt with. What do we hear tonight? Okay. That their issues are not going to be properly dealt with. So we have to step back okay. from the politics Alex, thank you. of Coliseum and get thank back you. to the politics of dealing with the past. Do you oppose a public inquiry? Well, whether there is or not, it, it cannot um, go back on an agreement which was made uh, with the two governments uh, on the OTRs, which involved these uh, people. Well, there's uh, which, didn't, can, which didn't involve anybody well, else. Well, it, didn't involve it, anybody else. Well, okay. well, you, okay. you, you yeah. weren't behind the door about trying to do things with the with the for the okay. victims, British, for the the victims the of terrorist well, violence. You okay. the door about for the victims of terrorist violence. Okay. And I okay. make an apology for it. Okay. Thank you very much indeed for for coming in here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Give our panel a round of applause, please.